The year is 2024. The date. June 18th. The world watches with bated breath as a new chapter in deep sea exploration is about to unfold. The Submersible, a marvel of modern engineering crafted by OceanGate, embarks on a daring mission. This mission is not just any dive, it is a journey to one of the most famous shipwrecks in history. Its destination? The Titanic's remains, resting on the ocean floor over two miles beneath the surface. The allure of the Titanic continues to captivate imaginations worldwide. This journey however will end in tragedy. The ocean with its unpredictable nature holds many secrets and dangers. The submersible carrying five souls plunges into the depths of the Atlantic. Each member of the crew, filled with anticipation and a sense of adventure, is eager to witness history firsthand. Their goal to witness the ghostly grandeur of the sunken ship. The Titanic, a symbol of human ambition and tragedy, lies in wait, shrouded in the darkness of the deep sea. As the submersible descends, the immense pressure of the deep ocean bears down. Hours pass. Silence from the depths. The crew's last moments are a mystery, lost to the crushing weight of the ocean. The submersible misses its scheduled resurfacing. Panic sets in as the realization dawns that something has gone terribly wrong. A frantic search begins, a race against time. Rescue teams scour the ocean hoping for a miracle but fearing the worst. Days later debris is found on the ocean floor. The discovery confirms the worst fears of all involved. The submersible has suffered a catastrophic implosion, all on board are lost. The world mourns the loss of these brave explorers, who ventured into the unknown. But in the wake of this disaster, questions arise. How could such a tragedy occur? What went wrong in the depths of the ocean? What led to this tragic loss? Investigations begin, seeking answers to prevent such a catastrophe from happening again. The legacy of the Titanic claims yet another chapter in its storied history. The deep ocean is a realm of mystery and danger, it's a place where immense pressure can crush even the strongest vessels. Exploring this unforgiving environment requires meticulous engineering and rigorous safety protocols. Yet, the regulations governing deep sea tourism remain murky, a stark contrast to the strict rules governing commercial aviation. OceanGate, operating in this regulatory gray zone, enjoyed considerable freedom. This lack of oversight allowed the company to push boundaries to innovate but also to potentially cut corners. Some argue that this freedom fostered a culture where risk-taking overshadowed safety. The tragedy of the serves as a harsh reminder, the deep ocean demands respect, not recklessness. It's a call for stricter regulations for a more cautious approach to deep-sea exploration. At the heart of the tragedy lies a controversial design choice, its hull. Unlike traditional submersibles which rely on thick steel or titanium to withstand crushing depths, the boasted a unique hull made of carbon fiber. Carbon fiber known for its strength and lightness, is a staple in aerospace engineering. But its use in deep-sea submersibles raised eyebrows. Critics argued that carbon fiber while strong under tension is less reliable under compression, the dominant force in the ocean depths. OceanGate however championed the carbon fiber hull as a revolutionary step forward, allowing for a lighter and potentially more maneuverable submersible. This choice, driven by a desire for innovation, would prove fatal. OceanGate under the leadership of its CEO Stockton Rush, embraced a culture of innovation. Rush, a visionary with a passion for pushing boundaries viewed traditional deep-sea exploration as slow and cumbersome. He sought to revolutionize the field with cutting-edge technology and a more agile approach. The, with its carbon fiber hull and unconventional design, embodied this philosophy. It represented a break from tradition, a leap into uncharted territory. But this relentless pursuit of innovation came at a cost, safety. Rush, it seems, believed that innovation could outpace the need for rigorous testing and traditional safety protocols. This mindset, while daring, proved tragically flawed. Section 5. Skirting the Rules OceanGate's approach to safety extended beyond its design choices. The company deliberately chose to operate outside the bounds of traditional industry standards. They declined to have the classified by independent organizations like the American Bureau of Shipping, a standard practice in the maritime industry. Classification by organizations like ABS involves rigorous inspections and testing to ensure a vessel's structural integrity and safety. 
Oceangate argued that such classification was too restrictive, stifling innovation and slowing down their progress. This decision to forego independent oversight while legal raised concerns among industry experts. It meant that there was essentially operating in a regulatory vacuum, subject only to Oceangate's own internal safety assessments. Section 6, The Missing Tests. The, despite its unconventional design, underwent some testing. It completed numerous dives, including trips to the Titanic wreckage. However, a crucial type of testing was notably absent fatigue testing. Fatigue testing involves subjecting a structure to repeated cycles of stress, simulating the wear and tear it would experience over many dives. This type of testing is crucial for identifying potential weak points that might not be apparent in a single dive. Oceangate, however, did not perform fatigue testing on the hull. The company argued that such testing was unnecessary, given the limited number of dives the submersible was expected to make. This decision in hindsight, proved tragically short-sighted. Section 7 Manufacturing Mysteries The construction of the carbon fiber hull also raised red flags. Carbon fiber, while incredibly strong and lightweight, requires precise handling and curing to ensure its integrity. Instead of using a traditional autoclave, a pressurized oven that ensures even curing and minimal imperfections, Oceangate opted for a less expensive and less reliable method known as bag curing. Bag curing, while suitable for some applications, carries a higher risk of introducing voids or imperfections into the composite material. This method involves wrapping the composite in a vacuum-sealed bag and curing it at atmospheric pressure, which can lead to uneven curing. These voids or imperfections, even if small, can compromise the structural integrity of the hull, making it more susceptible to failure under pressure. The risk is particularly high in deep-sea applications where the pressure is immense. Structural engineers have to be meticulous in their inspections, as even the smallest flaw can lead to catastrophic failure. The hull must withstand the extreme pressures of the deep ocean, and any compromise in its integrity can be disastrous. Concerns about the manufacturing process were reportedly raised by a former employee, who was subsequently fired. This employee had pointed out the potential risks associated with the bag curing method and the overall quality control measures. This incident, coupled with the unconventional curing method, casts a shadow over the quality control measures in place during the construction. It raises questions about the safety and reliability of the submersible, and whether cost-cutting measures were prioritized over safety. Section 8. Ignored Warnings The tragedy was not simply a case of unforeseen circumstances. Warnings about the submersible's safety were sounded but they were ultimately ignored. A former employee, as mentioned earlier, raised concerns about the hull's integrity and the lack of proper testing. These concerns were dismissed, and the employee was let go. David Lockridge, the director of marine operations for Oceangate, was fired after expressing concerns about the company's experimental approach. He specifically warned about the lack of non-destructive testing on the hull, a crucial step in ensuring its integrity. His warnings, however, fell on deaf ears. Section 9. A Flawed Safety Net Even with its unconventional design and questionable testing practices, the vessel was equipped with a safety system designed to detect potential hull failures. This system was supposed to be the last line of defense, ensuring the safety of the crew and the integrity of the mission. This system, however, proved woefully inadequate. Despite the advanced technology, it failed to provide the necessary protection. The system relied on acoustic sensors to listen for cracking sounds emanating from the hull. These sensors were meant to be highly sensitive, capable of picking up the faintest signs of structural failure. The idea was that these sensors would provide an early warning of a potential implosion, giving the crew time to surface. In theory, this would allow for a quick response to any imminent danger. However, experts criticized this system as being fundamentally flawed. They argued that relying solely on acoustic sensors was not enough to ensure safety. It was akin to waiting for the smoke alarm to go off after the house has already caught fire, as one expert put it. The analogy highlighted the reactive nature of the system, rather than a proactive approach to safety. The system was designed to detect existing cracks, not to predict potential failures. This meant that by the time a crack was detected, the damage might already be irreversible. By the time the sensors detected a problem, it would likely be too late. The crew would have little to no time to react, 
putting their lives at great risk. This flawed safety net raised serious concerns about the overall reliability of the vessel and its ability to withstand the harsh conditions of deep-sea exploration.